Hi everybody, this is Lorraine Alternative Homesteading. It is January 6th, 2023 on a Friday. Just wanted to give you an update that Chimperoo has been deleting, deleting all of the evidence that he's left behind about him stalking me, except for this one, folks. This is one of his other YouTube channels right here. And this is what he did here. He took my photo, he combed the internet, took my photo, and then created his own video. And by the way, folks, the video he created, Chicken Killer Lorraine, I have the link, and of course it no longer works. I guess the little wiener boy is getting scared. So anyway, and then I had the audacity of uh, an individual to leave me a comment. And she said, oh, I've had enough of all this targeting stuff. Why don't you leave Chimpo, I mean, that's not what she said, alone. He's a married man. I said, well, I have a message for you, little girl. I don't negotiate with bullies, cyber stalkers, and neither should you. And if you're supporting him because he's allegedly married, well, then there's something inherently wrong with your morality. This man, for a living, he combs the internet for targets. He steals their personal information, distorts it, and then spits it out on his gaming community pages. He's a parasite. He's a predator. He's a stalker. He is obsessive and compulsive. And then he, he says, this is what real targeting looks like. And then he posts my photo next to it. And then he creates a website on his own private server called Chicken Killer Lorraine. And then, of course, because it's his own private server, he can hide it when he feels like it. He can hide it from the authorities. He can hide it from YouTube, performing search. But I still have the link. I downloaded everything. He's everywhere he has tagged me. I have downloaded. So I have evidence that he has tagged me and my subscribers. And no, I'm not going to be quiet over this. And for the people that leave comments like, oh, Let's move on. Oh, he's married. He has a family. Well, you know what? I have a family. I have a channel and I deserve to not be stalked by this predator who combed the internet for my phone number and left a nasty voice message and then a text message. This is a stalker predator and he needs to be exposed. And no, I'm not going to be quiet about it. It's not going to be the focus of my channel. But if you don't want to speak about it, that's your problem. You're a coward too. I don't negotiate with bullies. And I will continue to speak up about it. And I want to give you a heads up that... Other YouTube creators are speaking out now about cyberbullying and, and harassment and stalking. I listed one of those under my channel. I'm going to pull away. I, I keep getting messages from Frank to send him more information for the talk tonight. And yeah, little wiener boy, you're going to be exposed. I want everybody to know who you are and what you've done to me. And you could hide all the evidence, but I've saved it all. I've saved it. You can have your private hacker server. But you gave yourself away. I love when... Gang stalkers give themselves away and provide all the evidence I need to expose you. 
Whether the authorities do anything or not, I don't know. Or whether uh, YouTube does anything or not, I don't know. But I know what I can do. And I'm sure I speak for a lot of other people who you have harassed and stalked. You get a rise out of it. You snicker behind your computer screen using various names. I use my real birth name. I don't hide behind Jitsi VOIP or Nerva Gorilla. Yeah, you've got some nerve. You mess with the wrong woman, wiener boy. Go tell your wife what you do for a living. So anyway, this is his other channel. You can see there are only eight subscribers. This is probably attached to his server. And this is what he did. He took my photo here. And um, I'm moving my magnet away because I want to uh, find that other... Let's see. I want to find the other subscriber. The community. One second, folks. Um, I, I want you to hear some of this and then go to their channel, listen to the entire story. And you, you tell me whether or not you think whether or not you think that these uh, this lovely couple is targeted. Look at this, folks. Watch this. This couple is being stalked on YouTube. Over the past five years, our family has been under attack. We want to tell our story in hopes of raising awareness about cyberbullying and how it affects the creators that we watch every single day on different platforms. Our hope is that we can reach out to other creators that are dealing with this right now and let them know that they are not alone. We also want to encourage other creators to use their platform to start talking about this subject in hopes it can gain some momentum and maybe create change. Telling our story is going to require several videos. Unfortunately, one just isn't going to do it. We do want parents to know that even though this is a real subject, due to the subject nature, it may not be appropriate for some younger viewers. If you're new to our channel, we are a couple, now a family, and seven years ago, we moved to a rural property to learn how to become more self-sufficient and build a custom home, our dream home by ourselves with our own two hands and try to become debt-free. It felt right to document the journey and our hopes was that maybe we could do so in a way that would inspire other people to take action in their own lives. Our channel shared a wholesome and positive story and rapidly grew during the course of our home building projects. As we were working on our home and our property busily, there were problems brewing underneath the surface. At first, we experienced the typical mean comments, which are usually pretty benign and every creator deals with, and basic moderation tools take care of this. At some point, a small but very cancerous group of people started watching our channel and using the comment section of our latest videos to recruit viewers off of YouTube to their own private group using a story like, we're fake, we don't live in our own house. Our child died, we died, we sold our property. With a little uh, Google research, I was able to find their place is now for sale. There was a rumor that they didn't even live at their house. There was rumor that they were living at a house that they bought. Those types of things. And the only limit is your imagination at the kinds of stories they came up with. 
and their own groups <laughs> were a private place where they could control the narrative unmoderated. While we were actually busy building our property, our home, and creating, these people have seemingly bottomless time to stir up negativity. They did this across numerous platforms, trying to stalk us and harass us at first digitally. Next, they began digging through all available public records. Let me read to you a few things that they started digging for. They started digging through our internet history, public records, family history, employment history, past friends, business associates, criminal records, family criminal records, and any other publicly available piece of information that they could find about us. And as if that's not really creepy enough, then they took the time and energy to compile all of that information into a mega document that people could download and read pretty much our entire life story, whether we wanted it shared or not. This group of people escalated and they started trying to coordinate attacks on our channel, such as stealing and trying to monetize our content, also known as copyright theft. They created 3D rendering videos of our house and of us mocking us as people. And they created lookalike accounts on numerous platforms, impersonating us, trying to trick naive people into thinking that we're engaged in some really nasty and questionable behavior. They were actively recruiting across numerous channels, numerous platforms, trying to get people to join their digital crusade. The problem with nefarious people when there's no consequences is they tend to get more bold and they escalate their behavior, especially when there's neurotic people who are either coordinating or egging them on. But eventually, the group activity could no longer just be constrained to the internet. It had to move to real life. People suggested getting together to fly drones over our house. We received death threats. People were following us in real time to see where we go and what our activities are. Family members were contacted to see if anyone would out us for being the frauds that we are. People threatened to vandalize our airplane as well as track its every movement real time. Next, they started working very hard to make sure as many people as possible know exactly where we live even though we never made that information public. They placed a Google pin on our house so that anybody with normal curiosity, maybe searching to see maybe there's more information about us available, could find out the exact location of our home. Also, before I get comments about putting our address in the video, if you do a simple search for uh, Jesse and Alyssa, Pure Living for Life, their address shows up on uh, Reddit there. So. I was going to run an errand, and uh, he was in a like, different part of town, and I, I rolled by, I'm like, hey, I know, I recognize that place, yeah. They got involved in what is called doxing, and they were posting our actual address across numerous platforms and numerous YouTube channels in the comments section. Anybody who would express any interest or any curiosity in our channel whatsoever would find out exactly where we lived. And of course, they even named their hate group after our channel. So the people using Google would be sure to find the information that they're trying to share about us. In this group, they began recruiting people to trespass, stalk, harass, threaten, vandalize, or even commit crimes against our family. Let me read to you some of the things that they were doing in this group. They were recruiting people to trespass our property, threaten and stalk our family, threaten our business associates and our channel partners, impersonating our channel partners, threatening our partners, harassing our neighbors, impersonating family members, and other personal connections that they could identify online. Demonstrating just how twisted this group is, they're actually monitoring the police reports in our local area to see if any of their actions digitally would result in the police being dispatched to our home. Eventually, this would lead to 24-7 surveillance of us and our home, including stalking, trespassing, videoing our house while we're inside of it, and death threats during the pregnancy and birth of our first child. Numerous 911 calls were made by us at this time to make sure that no threat or person that appeared on our property would escalate into something really bad. As you can imagine, knowing which of these threats to take seriously is a real challenge. Which one of these people is actually going to do the unthinkable to our family or our newborn child? 
we shared our pregnancy on our YouTube channel because, well, it's pretty hard to hide. But we had made the choice for obvious reasons to keep our pregnancy and the birth of our child private. And go figure, the attackers sought to use the birth of our new child as a reason to ramp up the threats, the stalking, the harassment, and the trespassing. At first, their justification for the new wave of attacks was because we could monetize our pregnancy, just like everybody else. And then when we didn't, they decided to attack us because we didn't share any information. They also used this as new fuel to recruit a new wave of disgruntled viewers. Because we chose to keep our birth private, they took it upon themselves to start digging locally, trying to get a hold of newspapers, trying to find birth records, contacting local hospitals, trying to do anything they could to figure out the sex and the name of our child. They were also actively recruiting anybody in the local community who might know us or who might know where we go to try to uncover this information. Finally, group members were encouraged to submit false complaints to CPS in attempts of getting our child taken away from us. In addition to that, people were doing surveillance on our property, trying to get photos and videos of our child, us playing with our child, going on walks with our child, making sure that you live in fear to literally step outside of your house. People who engage in this type of conduct, whether it's digital or in real life, know it's wrong. And they're aware that the consequences, if they were found, could be pretty severe. Because of that, they work very hard to conceal their identity. In a bit of irony, they're also very suspicious of other people because they're aware that the tactics that they're using against you could be used against them. Things like being anonymous, using fake usernames, threats, harassment, and even violence. For this reason, it requires a tremendous amount of effort to uncover the identity of these people. And once identified, it isn't always obvious how to bring about justice. And what viewers can't understand is how emotionally draining and exhausting and time-consuming and expensive it could be to deal with some of these issues. And what happens is instead of creators being busy creating and putting out the content that you all love, they're busy with dealing with things like these. Their audience is usually totally unaware, or at worst, they start seeing some of these things surface on the internet and they get to be really confused at if who they're watching is who they say they are, and then they eventually become members of the group and join in on the bullying and the harassment. We've been wanting to talk about this subject for quite some time because it's had a very deep effect on our life and our family. We also know that it's affecting tens of thousands of other creators, and it's not a subject most people even dare talk about. We've moved past all of this in our life, and so we feel like it's an opportunity for us to speak up and to raise awareness in case someone out there is dealing with this stuff right now. And we also want to use it as an opportunity to raise awareness with you, the viewers. If this is such a big deal, then why don't people talk about it? That is a really good question. In all honesty, I think a lot of cre- for a lot of creators, it comes down to fear. I think a lot of people are afraid of their subscribers. Not the 99% that are good. It's the 1% that's not good. Another aspect is that nobody wants to give bullies, people like these, airtime. Because unfortunately, while it is raising awareness, it's also validating their behavior because what they want more than anything is to see that they're getting to you and that they're getting a reaction. So addressing it publicly is the last thing that you want to do. Dealing with these things comes with an amount of embarrassment. We're afraid that people around us who just don't understand are going to be judgmental and critical. And honestly, that's the last thing that somebody who's under attack needs. Forgive the analogy, but that's kind of like asking a woman who was raped, well, what were you wearing? I think there's some truth in the fact that people just don't care or they don't really want to help. What I mean is people care a little bit enough to leave a comment like hugs or keep up the good work or we care about you. But to somebody who's under attack, this is literally useless. I think like people who are victims of anything that's particularly damaging, telling the story over and over and over gets really old. And in some way, there's an element of kind of reliving some of these traumatic events. And it can be re-traumatizing having to tell the story for the umpteenth time. 
And the reason somebody has to go into so much detail in telling the story is because normal people just cannot comprehend the level of hate and bitterness that goes into these actions. And so it requires giving a lot of detail about what happened so that normal people can get their heads around it. And of course, the last thing somebody wants to do is have somebody ask a bunch of very basic questions about what they could possibly have done to bring all this upon themselves. Many creators are afraid that speaking out in one way or another will affect their income. And a lot of creators use their platforms to generate a full-time income for their families. And speaking out could be absolutely devastating. And then another point is that sometimes speaking out can make it more challenging or more complicated to get justice. We have decided on our channel that January 2023 is Cyberbully and Online Harassment Awareness Month. We're going to dedicate the entire month on our channel to making more videos about this and sharing some of our stories because this subject deserves a lot more airtime than it actually gets. As we mentioned earlier, this subject is extremely complicated, and so we're not going to share a lot more detail in this video, but we're going to cover a lot more in the videos this month. Some of the things that we're going to cover include how do cyberbullies carry out their attacks, how do they remain anonymous, how do they form networks to act collectively so that no one person can be held responsible, how do they affect you in the real world, how do they recruit others to harass you, how do they infiltrate your relationships? How do they get around the legal system? Why do they do what they do? Who are their victims? Who are the trolls? And do cyberbully victims deserve what's happening to them? We also want to raise a lot of awareness among viewers because viewers really do represent the bulk of the force behind change. And so helping viewers to understand these issues, we hope will be a catalyst for change. And finally, we want to challenge other creators to speak up and speak out. We encourage you to make at least one video in the month of January on this subject. Just a note to creators, just because you personally haven't dealt with this yet does not mean it's not coming for you one day. The internet can be a very fickle place, and oftentimes you will say the smallest thing without even considering it, and that will bring you into this world. So even if you haven't personally been affected by this, maybe give it some honest thought as to whether you want to get involved and raise awareness with your audience. Some of you have already noticed that the comments for this video are turned off. Maybe you're one of those people that goes straight to the comments. We would encourage you, instead of spending the energy commenting on videos like this, take that energy and spend it spreading this message. There's some very small things that you can do to help this message have a greater reach. For example, you can like this video. That should help the video reach more people. You can also take a moment and share this video. If you're part of a group, maybe on social media, or maybe you have friends who you feel like would benefit from seeing this, people who enjoy watching YouTube and maybe don't know these things are happening, send this video to them or share this video to the group. Maybe there's people in the group that you follow who are creators who would benefit from hearing this information. Showing support to the creators that you watch is also very helpful. Maybe they have comments enabled and maybe they don't. But if you're able to connect with them, send them positive and supportive messages. These really do help people. And believe it or not, people who are under attack do actually kind of cling to some of those positive and supportive emails because it reminds them of why they even did what they're doing in the first place. And I guess I suppose this kind of goes without saying, don't be a bully. There's a common idiom in having a debate, which is healthy, and that is to attack the subject, not the person. Speaking a little bit more to creators, first of all, if you're dealing with this or you have dealt with it in the past and you need someone to talk to, you're very welcome to send us a message. At a minimum, we can at least listen and we understand. And second, if you have a channel of your own, no matter how big or small, again, we challenge you to make a video about this subject this month. And if you have been through cyberbullying or been a victim yourself, we really encourage you to share your story because we feel like that is liberating and it's a story that needs to be told. We have been talking about ways we can create a bigger change, and it's not entirely obvious. We have a few ideas. One of them is we would love to create some type of resource page for people who are dealing with these problems. Some of the things that we would like to include on that page is, first of all, finding legal assistance for people that understand this on a very deep level is extremely challenging, but 
the wrong person will be very happy to waste your time and take your money. Another would be mental health professionals that understand what comes with cyberbullying and the isolation of it all. We would also love to hear of other people's stories, what has happened to them, how they uncovered the identities, if they were able to, of their stalkers and their predators. We're also very interested in sharing the stories of other people on our channels, even if you wish to remain anonymous or not be on camera. We're very open to ideas. This is something we're extremely passionate about. And then we're also very interested in finding a way to provide some type of financial assistance to other people going through this because it can be extremely arduous and actually very expensive to try to uncover the identity of some of these people. We have come to the realization that sometimes being a creator is like having Hollywood problems without a Hollywood budget. We don't have bodyguards, we don't have deep pockets, but the problems are very, very similar. So we're open to maybe pooling resources, having a way for people to give, maybe have professionals donate some of their services. We're not we're not really sure what would be the best way to go about that, but there is interest there. We are open to ideas or maybe teaming together with other people that are just as passionate as we are. Stay tuned. We're going to be producing a series of videos on this subject as we make them. We'll be linking to those in the description below. So if you want to learn more about this subject and you want to get involved, go ahead and stay tuned for those links. We'll see you on the next video. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed that uh, presentation by Pure Living for Life. Um, this word is getting out, folks. Are are you? Do you think that these people are targeted? Do you think that somebody reported them to the watch list? Do you think it's just a local group of people that were envious and jealous that they purchased this beautiful property and built their own gorgeous home? Um, I'm really curious to hear what you have to say. Uh, but I'm very looking forward to uh, following their story. And they did provide um, a link to some information, helpful information that they just began. So I'm very looking, I'm looking very forward to hearing what else they have to say, and also speaking on Frank Allen's call tonight regarding the gorilla guy who has been removing the evidence from his websites. Uh, what he doesn't know is, no, I'm maybe I'm not as technically adept as you, but I do know how to take a screenshot. I do know how to cut and paste, and I do know how to save evidence. In fact, I am exceptional at saving evidence as documented on my channel so folks um thank you for watching thank you for subscribing welcome to the newcomers no we're not going to be talking about uh stalking and harassment in every video uh, i am a homesteader <laughs> i raise animals here i've got animals and a lot of other things that i'd rather be speaking about but this is very important because it is happening across the country so this is Lorraine Alternative Home City signing off for now.